Hey everyone, this is a little bit of an extension to my previous video, Blender Grease Pencil to Mesh. Um, there was a bunch of interest and a bunch of comments um, on, on the video, so I thought it was worth extending the topic a little bit and exploring a little bit more. Uh, so I think one of the, the top, top, top comments was uh, just a note that um, it wasn't all in Blender that I included uh, ZBrush in the process. And I understand that for a lot of people, you know, they want to have everything done in Blender because, you know, it's a free tool and uh, they don't want to have to purchase additional tools and, you know, it just simplifies things to have everything in one tool. And I completely agree with that. I would love to uh, have the same quality functionalities for sculpting and sculpting tools that you have in ZBrush and Blender as well. Uh, that would be ideal for me as well. But I'm, I'm experienced with ZBrush and so I, I do include it in my, my pipeline and I will until there's equivalent um, tools in, in Blender. So I wanted to explore uh, the Blender um, tools that are there and, and what are, what's wrong with them compared to those tools in, in ZBrush um, with the crease pencil to mesh pipeline in mind. So I'm just going to uh, subdivide. Um, I don't I don't know why, where the smooth subdivision is now. So bear with me as I'm getting used to the the new blender. So I'm just gonna subdivide it the old-fashioned way. <coughs> I'm gonna switch to matcap. I think the, the, the basic studio lighting is a bit flat. I know you can change it. Um, but let's just use matcap. Okay, so we have uh, our sphere. I'm just gonna use it to, to draw onto. And then I'm gonna create a crease pencil, blank. And then let's see, uh, we can just go into draw. And set the surface snapping and then increase the offset to I think 0.001 or something should be fine. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, I really love this. Um, and I want to note something actually, I don't know if this is going to happen, but if you go to sculpt mode and there's still an issue with the left click select where if I want to use my um, my left click drag it, it it it's inverted when you go into sculpt mode with grease pencil so you have to do right click um, I'll just push it to grab so I think I believe that there's a, a bug report for that um, that they're working on so what, the thing that I wanted to note was that it would be cool if unless this is the case yeah, it would be cool that the snapping continues unless you have to set it up here. Yeah, so it's no longer snapping to the surface when you're sculpting the tool. So I'm hoping that they uh, that they set that up, unless I'm missing it, which is possible. Um, okay, I'll go back to draw and let me just erase these. And I'll go back to the, to the draw and switch to the marker. Okay, there we go. So the problem that I was trying to describe in some of the, the comments was that when you convert this to a mesh, so I'm just gonna convert to crease pencil. I'm gonna use path and then deselect uh, link strokes. Okay, so, and now I'm just gonna hide the original grease pencil. Make sure I'm in object mode. And then this is the pad. So very confusing icons in my opinion. Um, but I know they're working hard on that and I'm sure they will improve it as it goes. Uh, so just gotta get this right. 
So I believe this is the path, but I'm not sure why I'm not able to go into edit mode now. Unless I need to... Yeah, so it's a little issue still that you have to first go into object mode on your previously selected mesh. And, um, yeah. So I'm just going to turn off these normals. Okay, so again, we'll hide the prespencer. So we have this uh, mesh now. And if we, uh, well, it's a curve mesh. So if we go to the curve options or the shape options, as they're called, and then we go to this is stuff I showed in the previous video, <coughs> and we go to full, and then in geometry, uh, increase the, the the depth on the bevel. You get basically now geometry on your um, <coughs> on your crease pencil. So this is already really great, um, and you can leave it at this now as well. You know, like there's a plenty of stuff you can do, just keeping it as curve. Um, and I think this is going to be useful for a lot of people, regardless. And I, I bet people will will use this kind of functionality to create add-ons to do cool stuff as well. So this is great. So um, so I'm just going to increase the depth a little bit and increase the resolution as well. Put it to uh, eight, and then I'll increase this resolution also. Or maybe twenty-four is fine. So, if now we convert this object to a to a mesh, so mesh from curve data. Now we have our mesh, and the thing that I was trying to to explain on the comments was that. The difference between the workflow in Blender and the workflow in ZBrush is that where you see this mesh intersecting, because it's still a, a tube, you know. So if I go to edit mode and I go into my edge mode, and you know, if I select, just have to zoom in a bunch, if I select uh, this loop, you see that it loops all the way just because it's just a tube, right? So <clears throat> If, um, let me just go back to the object. If you apply a, um, so one, one of the things that was suggested, I'm gonna hide the cube. One of the things that was suggested was to flatten it in, in sculpt mode and then apply um, a dynamesh, I think, uh, or what is it called? I forgot what it's called, but we'll go through that. So I'm gonna, um, Duplicate it first, so I have the mesh, just in case something bad happens. And then we're just gonna go into sculpt mode and select the flatten brush, and then just flatten the the mesh out. And I suppose the reason for this is so that you have uh, well, kind of a flat surface, and the the space between the the tubes gets kind of flattened out as well and so that way those verts can easily merge I suspect that's the purpose behind this um, and then I guess you can do the back as well so now we have kind of flat surface here and then the idea is to go into object mode and go to uh, is it remesh? No, it's uh, no right. So in in sculpt mode, sorry, I got this wrong. So in sculpt mode, you turn on dynotopo or dintopo, dynamic topology, and then uh, so I'm just gonna turn it on. So the idea is that now, if I turn on the wireframe, we should be able to see. The wireframe does not work. I wish we had this kind of wireframe thing for grid as well, or do we? No, I don't think we do. So you can like reduce the opacity of the grid. Uh, that would be cool. So okay, so here we have. So it's it's now with dinner topo, and if we go into sculpt mode, as you're sculpting on the mesh, it's kind of remeshing it based on the resolution that you have set over here. Um, 
So this is in general what um, Dynamesh does in ZBrush, but you don't have to sculpt, so it does it automatically um, when you enable it. And you also have dynamic um, sculpting in, in ZBrush as well, but it's a different tool. Uh, so that's more like this basically. So I'm going to go through this and so the problem with this is still the fact that it's changing the topology, which is great, but it's not merging these faces or these verts. So if I go into um, edit mode and I uh, see if I can visualize like this, it's, it's very, um, you see, it's not, it's not merging anything at all. It's just uh, remishing the topology, which is what it's supposed to do, I, I, I bet. Um, so if I now um, grow my selection, you see how what it does is just, it's exactly the same, nothing has changed really. And so the problem that I have with this setup is that it, it's, it's making a workflow um, that's already messy, even more messier. And I really don't like the idea that you have like floating geometry and, and additionally, if I now want to do some editing, like I want to, let's say proportionally, uh, let's do connected. I want to adjust the topology or, or just the shape. Aside from the fact that it's incredibly slow because the mesh is so high res now, um, it, it's just, it's, it's very messy to work with. Um, even if it's not set to connected, you know, if it's just regular, it's still gonna give you messy results. Uh, so, the other thing that you could do now is you could go to, um, I believe, Remesh. And Remesh does kind of a little bit of a better job, I believe. Um, but Remesh is incredibly slow and it doesn't exactly accomplish either what, what you would want uh, because it gets kind of confused with the, the, the geometry that's in between the tubes. So I think you would have to get it like to a really su a sweet spot. Um, and it's just, it's really very unideal. Like it, it, this gets to a point that is so messy that I don't, um, that I, I, I wouldn't want to do anything like this. Uh, as someone pointed out also in the comments, like, why don't you just concept out these things in ZBrush to begin with? Like, why do we even need to convert uh, crease pencil to mesh and stuff like that? And to that point, it, it's, it is because it is actually, it's quite interesting to, to sketch something out with crease pencil and crease pencil is really powerful tool and I can see it getting much more powerful as uh, Blender 2.8 gets um, like it's finalized, and I can see it becoming a very big part in into in the concepting uh, community. And even to me, I'm not really a concept artist, but I can see it because it's so much more intuitive to be able to sketch something out in 2D and 3D space, and then manipulate it, and just having the the ability to then convert that to geometry and then continue to tweak that geometry it's it's a big deal like it, it's not something even though there may not be like obvious use cases for it now it's open so much possibilities that it undoubtedly will have a lot of use cases so i'm very excited about uh, the crease pencil it's probably the thing i'm most excited about with blender 2.8 now what i would like to do is i would like to show uh yeah, someone mentioned also that there's like lots of cleanup tools to to get to deal with the floating geometry and stuff like that and I know, unless uh, there's ones that I don't know about, but anything related to the um, uh, to the cleanup, like the delete loose, and uh, you know all of these, like they help a little bit. Um, like we, you could just also select all all your verts, and then uh, just to remove duplicates, and that'll get you, you know, it'll get you somewhere. But so even if we get it to this it really messes up the volume and it it kind of it's very uncontrolled you know like it, there's no real 
it's not really built to do what we're trying to do here. So, I mean, look what, what's going on. If you go to wireframe mode, um, it's just, it's, it's not able to deal with this in, in the way that we would want it to deal with because it's not built for that. Um, however, if we, um, let me just hide this and I will unhide the one that we duplicated. There we go. So if we go to the ZBrush, I'm just going to export this to Nobi. I'm importing that mesh. So I have the mesh here. So the difference is that with uh, DynaMesh and ZBrush, DynaMesh is essentially built for, for doing this. Um, it, if I, like with just the default settings now, it, you see what it does? Like it basically, as long as the outer surface closes things up, it will delete whatever is inside of it. I'm gonna hide this one. There we go. So let me switch to wireframe view or go into edit mode. So you can you can see it. You see it's completely empty inside. The difference is huge and the the topology is super clean as well. So and this is just without tweaking any settings. So even this didn't take very long to do and I, I didn't do it fast either. So and of course now at this point you can also um, sculpt on it in Blender. Uh, you don't have to do any of the sculpting in, in ZBrush if you don't want to. Um, so this is really, you know, like you don't have to use ZBrush, but unfortunately the, the difference between like if I would want to have the, the mesh as clean as this in Blender, I would have to do a lot, you know, like none of the tools by themselves merge words Dynatopo, um, Remesh, none of those tools by themselves can accomplish what ZBrush's Dynamesh does in the same time. So the, the best way would be in, in Blender, in my opinion, is to very robustly, um, very robustly just retopologize the geometry, which kind of then at that point, it does kind of defeat defeat the purpose of you know concepting out something quickly this is exactly what I do I just draw something and I didn't, don't fill it up so I just draw the outline and then convert it to a, um, a path then uh, don't tubify it but instead um, just make it I'm, I'm merging some of the verts I'm connecting them so that it's a solid shape and then uh, I can do a quad fill on it and then add a solidify and a bevel and all that stuff and that way you can kind of retopologize what you draw in uh, the panels that you draw in, in uh, grease pencil but this is not really what we're talking about here this is kind of something different and i can also see this becoming a great add-on where you draw a panel in grease pencil and then have an add-on that goes through those motions by itself you know maybe with some settings um, like I can see that being very useful, but to, to quickly concept out shapes with crease pencil and convert it to mesh like I did here, we would need in Blender something that is as powerful as ZBrush. Um, uh, I don't really see the tools in Blender currently being able to handle it in the same way. And I'm, I'm a fine, I'm, personally I'm fine with that because I own ZBrush and I'm very fluent with ZBrush, but I can, I can see it be something very valuable for people who would rather not work in ZBrush and only want to use uh, Blender. So again, this is just an extension to the previous video to highlight some of my, my thoughts on this. If you, if I missed something or if you, if you know that there is a better way of, of trying to accomplish this exact thing in Blender using Blender standard tools uh, or even an add-on, I would be super happy if you could let, let me know about that because I, I'd, I'd gladly keep my workflow mainly in Blender. Um, okay, I hope this was somewhat helpful to you guys.